today's recipe calls for your favorite link of sausage. I'm gonna show you how to make a super simple sheet tray meal. It's a classic meat and potato style. It's very easy to put together and it's super tasty. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we need to do so we can start this simple sheet tray meal is preheat the baking cube. Set the temp to 400 Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius. While that's becoming hot and bothered, we'll toss an empty half tray into the oven. I'll explain more later on why we're doing this. Let's start prepping out our ingredients. We'll start with the veggie portion of the meal. Snag yourself 12 ounces or 340 grams of some fresh green beans. You can also use frozen beans of green if you prefer. Skip the next step if you are using frozen. This will only apply to the fresh beans. We need to trim the green stick just a little bit. We'll do this by cutting off a very small amount on each side. The sides will have a woody stem part from where it grows on the vine. We need to discard this part. You can trim each bean one at a time, which would take a billion years to do. Or you can use the fast method by bundling a small uniform stack together. They should all be lined up lengthwise on your cutting board. After you've accomplished that, grab a large chef's knife and push the small bundle of beans against the broadside of your blade. This will help make an even stack on the ends, which in turn will give us a more uniform cut. This method is not as precise as cutting them singly, but typically there's not very much waste. Following the trim of the beans, toss them into a large holding device. I am going to keep mine as large sticks of green beans. If you want something more manageable to eat after they've been cleaned up, you can simply cut them in half. After you've decided what eating experience you would like, grab a small to medium sized yellow onion. Cut the top off, which is the opposite end of the hairy side. Next, cut the veg into two equal sections, then peel all the paper skins off. Now that your veg is all naked, we need to make little sections of the thing that makes people cry. Slice the onion from the front towards the root, making sections that are small. We'll be using the whole onion for this recipe, so repeat the same step for the other half. Before we add this ingredient to the bowl with the green beans, break apart the onion sections from one another. This will make it easier to have it spread throughout the bowl of goods. On to the next component of the dish. Grab one and a half pounds or 680 grams of baby Dutch yellow potatoes or any type of small potatoes that are available to you. We need to cut all the little spuds into small 1 8 inch thick coin sized pieces. I find the easiest and fastest way to achieve this is by using the tip of the chef's knife. For the most part, the potatoes will not stick to the tip of the blade, making the process a little faster. They'll stick a little bit, but not as much as they would if you use the heel of the blade. Fun fact, the reason why they become stuck to the knife is because when you cut them, they will release all the water and starch they hold, causing the spud to adhere to your knife. Now that you have some tricks and a little food science knowledge, toss the cut potatoes into the bowl with the other two ingredients. Onto the protein portion of our easy meal. Snag a link of your favorite type of pre-cooked sausage. I'm going to be using 13 ounces or 368 grams of some pre-cooked turkey polska kielbasa sausage. Cut the link into two sections, making it much easier to manage during the slicing process. Now that you have two links, we need to cut our sausage into some medium sized meat coins. Should roughly be about a quarter inch, just a little bit thicker than what we cut the potatoes at. The meats will stick to your blade. This is a good opportunity to use the stuck piece as a measuring tool to gauge the next cut. Repeat this step until both links have been cut into coins. You can leave them as a whole piece, but last minute I decided to cut them into half moon pieces. This way it will have more protein spread throughout the veggies. If you decide to do the same, don't be like me and save yourself a little bit of time. You can do this by cutting the whole link in half, making another two sections, then cutting it into the half moon pieces. Anyways, when the meats have changed from its original shape, Toss it into the bowl with the other goods. Once we have all of our ingredients in the holding device, we need to make it rain two tablespoons of a neutral tasting oil that has a high smoke point. Give the bowl of protein and veg a mixer to coat everything in the oil. Make it hail a few fat pinches of coarse ground kosher salt and a good sized sprinkle of black pepper as well. Mix those into the bowl of goods to ensure everything is spread throughout. Give it a quick taste test and adjust the seasoning as needed. You can also add any of your other favorite spices in 
that you would like. I meant to add in granulated garlic, which would have made things even better, so don't forget to add that in. If you are going to add granulated garlic in, add about a tablespoon, then adjust as needed to hit the flavor profile you want. When things have been seasoned and your pan is nice and hot, snag the half tray out of the oven, dump the bowl of ingredients onto the sheet pan. Spread the contents out evenly on the tray to make it into one even layer of stuffs. Grab the hot tray of food and toss it back into our preheated oven. Place the goods on the middle rack for the best results. Set a timer to bake slash roast this first side for 15 minutes. The reason why we put the empty tray in the oven while it was preheating is because we want the pan to become ripping hot. This way when we add the food to the tray, it'll sear the ingredients giving us a good caramelization while also help jump starting the cooking process. After the first buzzer has rang, pull the sheet out to give the pan of foods a mix. This will help ensure we achieve the most even cook on all of our ingredients. At this time, we can check the potatoes to see how firm they are. That way we can adjust the next set of cook time if needed. We want the spuds to be an al dente texture, which means they will be mostly soft, but still have a little bit of a firm texture to them. You can check this by using a fork to pierce one. If the fork pierces the potato easily, then you know it's done. On the other hand, if it takes some effort to pierce it, then they still need some more baking time. When you've stirred the pan of foods and checked the potatoes, toss the tray back into the oven. We'll bake the goods for an additional 15 minutes for a total time of 30 minutes or until the potatoes have become al dente in texture and have become a golden brown color. Times may vary depending on how hot your little oven box runs. When the final buzzer rings, pull that hot hunk of metal out of the heat. Let the pan of food cool for three to four minutes or until the food is not too hot to consume. Eat this stuff right off the tray or or be a normal person I guess and plate things up. Pro tip, eat this meal with a little bit of sour cream or Greek yogurt as a dipping sauce. It makes the meal that much better. Turn this into a super simple meal prep recipe or make this for the family on a busy weeknight. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy. All right, now that our sheet tray meal is done, let's give it the old taster. So looking at it, it came out super aesthetically pleasing. We got a good amount of caramelization on our potatoes. They got that really golden brown color. Green beans themselves are nice and bright and green and super vibrant. The onions are very translucent in color, so we got the perfect cook on those as well. The sausage also looks super tasty, of course. And overall, it just looks really yummy all together. And this thing's getting super heavy now, so let's just try it. See if I can get a piece of everything. That's a good bite. This sheet tray meal came out so dang tasty. The sausage itself is nice and good, of course. The potatoes themselves are really good as well. And I just love potatoes, but then when you roast them and get that caramelization on them, it takes them to the, like, the next stratosphere of flavor. The green beans themselves also taste nice and healthy. The onion pairs really well with the green beans. And it's kind of faint in the background, but helps build a ton of flavor. Texture wise, the green beans are a little crunchy, so you, they're nice and al dente, so you get a good crunch factor in there. The potatoes are nice and tender. Overall, this thing is just super good. This meal is super simple to slap together, and you can pretty much make it any which way you want. Maybe add some more of your favorite veggies, like some broccoli or zucchini or even cauliflower, or make it even better and ditch the turkey sausage and use a spicy sausage which sounds super delicious. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And I might go eat a little bit more of this and then box up the rest for meal prep if I get to that and I don't eat it all today. But uh, we'll see how that goes and we'll see you on the next one. All right. <coughs> overall, over, overall, this sheet tray meal, sheet tray, sheet tray. Well, Nope. No. Potatoes are 